Welcome, everyone, and thanks for listening in to our second episode of Chat with the Chair podcast. Today, we're joined by Dr. Lisa Shockett, Associate Professor and Interim Chair of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Shockett. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling us a bit about yourself and what led you to pursue the field of ophthalmology? Well, since we're here on campus, I will start off by saying that I was actually born in Baltimore at University of Maryland. And then I went to Bryn Mawr School for high school, moved on to Brown University, did my residency and medical school both at University of Pennsylvania, and then I did a fellowship at Tufts Ophthalmic Consultants of Boston in vitro retinal disease. And when you ask what led me to pursue ophthalmology, I would say, you know, everything in medicine is interesting, but nothing particularly, I guess, really grabbed me. And um, I was struggling a little bit to decide what I wanted to do, but I thought in my life, who is the person who loves their job more than anyone in the world? And that's my father. He is a retired retina surgeon. And if, you know, at the height of his career, if you ask like or thought about what his hobby was, it was retina and everything was retina and ophthalmology and he invented things. He he just found everything so exciting. So he suggested to me to go over to the ophthalmology department at my medical school. And I was very fortunate. There's a fabulous chairman there named Stuart Fine, who actually also uh, went to medical school here. And he was a fabulous mentor and quickly got me engaged in research and in ophthalmology. And just from there, I became very interested. And you're also a retinal specialist as well. Yes. And then I ended up at University of Maryland, where he was also the interim chair. Wow. It's very funny. Yeah, that is yeah. funny. So what do you have a particular area of interest in at this moment? I do everything in retina, you know, from macular holes, retinal detachment surgery, macular degeneration, retinal vascular disease. I am particularly more interested in diabetes because it's such a prevalent disease in our city, but I do take care of all retinal diseases. And as the interim chair of ophthalmology for the department, tell us about your vision for the department and your leadership style and how you really see your team making great impacts on the state of Maryland and the city of Baltimore and the whole community. I think the unique thing about our department is that we are a cohesive unit. We really work well together. We, you know, I have the um, great situation where when I'm uh, seeing patients on our Redwood campus, there's always a cornea specialist and a glaucoma specialist. And so we often see very complex referrals from other um, institutions or other private practices, and we are very able to work as a team. And so I think we're able to provide the best quality coordinated care in that way we can do combined surgeries or and we have great discussions on figuring out the best care for the patient i would like to be more and more engaged in the community and my specific interest is diabetic retinopathy and specifically diabetic retinopathy in the baltimore city community Um, i will tell you that I was a little bit shocked when I moved to Baltimore because it was a little different than where I was training, which some of the pockets of Boston where I was training was very wealthy. And here we see, unfortunately, very severe disease that we should never see. It's all preventable and it breaks my heart. I would say at least twice a week, I will see a young, typically African-American female who comes in maybe complaining of floaters, you know, and I look in their eyes and it's just horrible. And I can tell them that they're gonna go completely blind within a year if they don't proceed with treatment. And I can't always get them to adhere to treatment. And that's my biggest struggle. And the most important thing I think we need to try to change. Why is it that they are hesitant to the treatment? There's a long list of reasons, unfortunately. I think, you know, one major reason is like mistrust of providers and some like, you know, hesitancy to trust me. Um, We are fortunate we have this fabulous photographer who actually was the photographer at the department when my father was there too. So he 
um, is a bit older African American male who really um, sometimes I will explain everything, show the pictures, try to engage the patient, and I can I just get this feeling that the patient's not going to come back. They're not they they look at me a little funny, and I know they're not they're not really like engaged. So I go in the other room. I say, Ricky you get this patient, you need to talk to them. You need to explain the photos and explain what they need. And then they come back and oftentimes he can get them to comply with treatment because he's African-American and they trust him more. But I wish we could get more community health care workers, more engagement of this population to, to be able to improve the care because this is all preventable vision loss. What exciting research is being done right now in the field of ophthalmology? I'll first tell you the research on this topic. Um, And the research on this topic is interesting because we've tried to improve these issues. Like we've tried to improve engagement, but it's been difficult. Um, But there was a very interesting study done in 2015 in Philadelphia looking at older African Americans and trying to engage them with care and engage them with just coming in and getting their baseline eye exams. And they used a church um, going out into the community and used community health care workers and really paired people to figure out what the barriers to care were and they really improved their dilated exams. And similarly, I will say that on November 5th, the endocrinology department um, is doing a big community outreach at the new Shiloh Baptist Church. And uh, the ophthalmology department will be there screening uh, our patients in the community for diabetes. What are some of the challenges you face as the leader now of the Department of Ophthalmology? I mean, one challenge I face in general is this challenge that we're already talking about is non-adherence and you see that also in glaucoma um, and other diseases in our inner city population because of barriers to care such as you know patients need to go to work or need to take care of family members and they can't always uh, come in for their appointments and therefore we're getting to patients way too late and um, the surgeries become very complex so it's harder to restore vision when we're when everything is so far gone. What advice would you offer to somebody who is interested in pursuing a career in ophthalmology? The first thing I would say is to find a great mentor. Uh, I was very fortunate by finding a great mentor in Dr. Stuart Fine when I was in my uh, residency. But in order to help with training steps, it's always important to find a great mentor. And then also find a place where you're comfortable working. We are very fortunate here where everyone in our department is a team player and we all like to work well together. And that's a great opportunity for learning, for further research. Um, So finding a great mentor and finding a place where you're interested. I guess the third thing is find something obviously that you're passionate about because it's always easier to pursue and work on things that you're most interested in. Talk to us about the challenges you faced, and you and your team, during COVID and how you were able to overcome those challenges, especially, you know, dealing with the eyes. You're right there up close and personal in people's faces. So how was it that you were able to still maintain your, your patient volume and everything else with all these barriers? Ophthalmology was a little bit harder because we did try and we did do some virtual visits and it was a little amusing also because like you would call a patient and uh, some of the older patients trying to put the camera up to their eye was was quite challenging, but you really can't get an appropriate exam for virtual. So that wasn't like a great option for us. Um, Our team did some great work, specifically Dr. Ronnie Levin did some great work with virtual rotations um, for the medical school and for residents who still wanted to rotate with us. And she set up these fabulous wet labs that were virtual to teach students how to suture. And she became nationally renowned for her work. Um, the patient volumes went down for a little, but we're, you know, we've, we've learned like everyone in the country and in the world to deal with COVID, but, but it was a little bit of a bump in the road for us, for sure. Talk to us about your relationship with referring physicians. 
and how you ensure that they stay up to date on what's going on with their patient and how you nurture that relationship with other referring docs. Sure. I actually was originally in private practice in the community. And so I came here with a lot of relationships with um, some great referring providers. And, you know, I'm often texting them, emailing them, calling them on the phone for updates. Epic is pretty easy to like shoot off a letter to someone. So I feel that we are all pretty good at, at texting and emailing our community providers. So the relationship works well. Talk to us about the differentiators. What makes the University of Maryland Department of Ophthalmology unique in their approach to patient care and also in their approach to research? The approach to patient care is really the teamwork. Like we have a, you know, an ease of teamwork. We're a small department. We're always, you know, I, I recently had a complex post-operative issue that was really, you know, a little bit mind boggling. And I very easily could call my colleague, Dr. Saidi on a Saturday and just say, hey, what do you think of this? And he he actually was fascinated by the question and was excited to talk about the complex issues. So that that's the the unique thing about our department is we all are happy to talk to each other, happy to help each other out. So we always have an expert at our fingertips. And you also provide care 24-7 for any eye emergencies, correct? Yes, and we do get a lot of eye emergencies because of our relationship with shock trauma. What are you most excited about in the future of the treatment for retinal disease? There are constant advances in our field. You know, right now there are, we've gone from larger gauge instrumentation to much smaller incisions which allows for faster post-op recovery and more delicate dissection of tissue. We have better visualization during our surgeries. And then in the practice setting, we use a lot of intravitreal drugs to treat a host of diseases, including diabetes and macular degeneration. And it's unfortunate that currently a lot of those injections need to be monthly, so the future holds that there are a lot of drugs in development that will hopefully make it so that patients don't need to have their injections as frequently. Do you also offer expert second opinions or guidance to referring providers, um, helping to educate them on when to send a patient, when to refer a patient to whether it's a retina specialist or a cornea expert, glaucoma expert, whomever? Yes, we constantly get second opinions for all of our subspecialties, and we're always available by phone or text um, just to you know ask an opinion as to who the best provider. I've I've done that on multiple occasions, and we're you know so easily can grab each other from different locations. So even you know I, I got a cornea emergency the other day, but knew where to grab our cornea specialist from the VA. So we're we're very uh, easy to work with, I believe. Is there anything else you think those listening in should know about either the University of Maryland Department of Ophthalmology, your physicians, or just the future of retina disease? Just in summary, you know, we are a very cohesive department that is happy to take care of any of the referrals from the community. And we work well together and can provide very subspecialized coordinated care. Thanks again for stopping by for Chat with a Chair, brought to you by University of Maryland Faculty Physicians, Inc. For more information about today's guest or to listen to additional episodes, visit umfpi.org backslash podcast. Until next time.